Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. I didn't just murder all of those children. I also devoured their souls. <laughs> ah! Strange things are happening in that house. When did the manifestation No mortal can control his kingdom. possible. I don't believe in these things. All wrong, Peter. There is a devil. You've got to get out of here immediately. Peter, they just want us back in that house. No, your son is still in there. Well, then who is that? And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for Beyond Darkness, a.k.a. La Casa 5. This is disc number 63 in the Italian collection. Currently on sale on their website for a measly £10. And I don't want to give my cards away too much. Uh, yeah, buy this one. This one's fucking bonkers. The blurb as listed on the website is, When a man of God and his loving family move into a new house, they think they've found the perfect home until they discovered that their new digs were once the location where the coven of witches were burned at the stake. It's only a matter of time before the radio starts blaring satanic chants and the cutlery takes on a mind of its own. Will the awakened evil in the house have its final revenge or can a plucky priest fend off what lurks beyond darkness? This tale of terror comes from Claudio Fragrazzo, the director of Troll 2. So you know it's good. Special features on this one are a limited edition soft touch slipcase, limited edition notes by Chloe Ta Lee Taylor, HD transfer in original 166 1 aspect ratio, the optional English SDH subtitles, LPCM 2.0 soundtrack, an audio commentary by genre experts. Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson, Hammond and Hair Loss, an interview with composer Carlo Maria Cordillo, Filmerage Memories, an interview with Alessandra Lenzi, daughter of esteemed director Umberto Lenzi and production executive at Filmerage, original trailer, reversible sleeve with all their tiles, and in your special features it is region locked to region B. The audio is LPCM 2.0. Picture is HD 1080p 1661. Runtime was one hour and 33 minutes approximately. Language is English. Subtitles are English. Certification 15. Holy fucking shit. So I'd never seen this movie before. And so this is later day Italian horror. And I kind of get giddy a little bit about that because... Like, the, the Hades is long since gone, and we're in the death throes, but we are just ripping off everything at this point, and Italian cinema in general, well, genre specifically, is known for being a bit 
creative in the way it can just pick three or four Hollywood movies and mash them into a blender and that's Beyond Darkness which is really a cross between Hellraiser, Amityville, The Exorcist, The Poltergeist, um, all in one movie, all in one movie and it's fucking bonkers. I was kind of taken back because the, the main kind of priest guy in this one is the head kind of artistic director in Aquarius Stage Fright so it kind of shocked me seeing him and I had to rack my brains as to where I knew him from because he's an Irish actor as well and he plays this uh, this priest but cut that a very quick synopsis here priest shows up uh, to give the last rites to a woman on death row woman claims that she is possessed by some sort of hellish satanic demon who's demanding innocent souls so she murdered like 12 kids and then she's put in the electric chair um, after handing her book to the priest and saying I'll see you sometime soon buddy and then we jump forward uh, a bit of time a new priest arrives with his new family into this house which just happens to be the location of where a bunch of witches were burned and uh, the house then starts doing Amityville stuff but also has what appears to be a portal to the other side a la Poltergeist but there's also like witch demons on the other side a la Hellraiser and then there's a huge possession sequence in the middle of it a la The Exorcist so yeah um, this was like surprisingly fun I mean, like, really, 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 really fun. You're going to get that with Fergrasso. Fergrasso, I mean, Trolls 2 is a terrible fucking movie, but by God, is it entertaining. And this kind of continues that trend, although this is head and shoulders better than Troll 2. The thing about it is that while you're watching it, you very easily start to see, or you very easily start to think, oh, well, this is just this sort of movie. And then it takes a wicked left turn and becomes a different Hollywood horror movie. And it takes a wicked turn and then becomes a different movie to a certain point where you really are kind of confused as to what, what we're doing, where you're going, how's this going to marry together and how's it going to wrap up. The acting is surprisingly good in this one. Now, I want to stress, it's not great, but it's surprisingly good when you kind of put it against other Italian horror movies from the surrounding years, whether that's 88, 90, oh, sorry, 88, 89, 91 or 92. The actor is of a good quality here. I suppose it's mostly because it's English language and English uh, actors, which I think help it a little bit so we don't have some of that dodgy dubbing that sometimes plagues these movies. Um, it's well shot. Special effects are actually pretty cool. Uh, the look of the witches towards the end, I really enjoyed. I thought that was kind of gnarly. And they're not too dissimilar to the picture of the witch on the front cover of the Blu-ray. So they're not far off that. They've obviously made her a bit more witchy. But, it, you know, it's pretty much there. Um, there's some kind of cool practical effects as well involving seeping blood that I enjoyed. Um, the lighting is nuts. Um, and the sim track is nuts but it weirdly all works together my only kind of issue with this one overall is it did feel a bit long and that's surprising it's an hour and a half and i did feel it about the hour and 20 minute mark we should be bringing this in now and it continued on and it continued on so i feel there's maybe a little bit of loose kind of skin here that could be trimmed off and benefit in the movie but for a first time watch in a movie I'd never heard of before, I think this one is a surprising little entry. It obviously follows on the series of La Casa movies. We talked about one three weeks ago, whenever it was we did this number 62. And obviously none of them are connected at all, even a little bit. Um, out with the fact that they're all set in a house, uh, but not the same house. And I think, once again, I there's something weird about that kind of spiritual kind of spiritual sequel, spiritual, you know, successor thing in this movie that kind of makes me think everything's, you know, like, it gives me a bit of glee when watching it because it's clearly bonkers, it's clearly a rip-off, um, it's, it's clearly not got that much in the way of originality about it, but by God is it entertaining. And I can overlook things, I've said this before, I can overlook things specifically in the Italian side of it, if they're giving me stuff I've never seen before or cinematography that's bonkers or at least make me entertained and this movie has no shortage of entertaining 
moments. Tons of set pieces, like big old set pieces where you're like, well, this would be the finale in any other movie. Or oh, what, we are 20 minutes into this? Well, that's a bold choice. And yeah, it just continues doing that all the way through. I found Beyond Darkness to be a surprisingly fun and entertaining Italian horror movie that I had never heard of before. My score for this movie out of five will be four. I really like this one. I challenge someone to sit down and watch it and not find like even a high level of entertainment, even if you don't like the subject matter, or you don't like the movie, it is entertaining EF for sure. Um, I, let's talk about some of the special features. Now they obviously don't get included in the grade here, but I switched on and off the audio commentary. Um, it's always great to hear Troy Holworth and Nathaniel, Nathaniel Thompson talk. They know their shit, and you get some like like really good insight. Now, I always do this when I watch these movies. I'll turn it on for like five minutes, on and off, intermittently as I'm watching the movie. But I did watch the two um, kind of documentaries, Hammond and Hair Loss and Film Manage Memories, and both are, are like worth your time. I don't necessarily think they bring like a huge level of detail or knowledge to the background of this movie, but I would argue we probably don't need that anyway. I, I feel we, we could add a bit more from maybe the actors, most of them still alive, but um, you know, obviously maybe a bit difficult to get these days on a Blu-ray. But yeah, I, I thought this was thoroughly entertaining. Highlight for the £10 they're selling it for on their website right now. This is a fucking steal for entertainment. So get yourself a copy, sit down and enjoy the bonkersness.